Welcome to Living Life. May the Lord bless you as you walk together with Him today. What do you find frustrating as you work with people, especially teaching them God's Word? I remember when I first uh, went into ministry, uh, became a, a youth pastor and teaching them, one thing that kept me frustrated again and again was that people were not changing. And I was frustrated after one semester, after one year, how come people are not changing? Is something wrong with me or what's wrong with these people? And that was a little bit of trouble and the struggle that I had. In today's passage, we will think together about some of the things that we need to keep in mind as we do the teaching ministry, sharing God's Word together with your people. Matthew chapter 13, verses 18 through 30. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The one who received the seed that fell on rocky places is a man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it making it unfruitful. But the one who received the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. He produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The inner servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Today's passage is a continuation of what you've been meditating on yesterday. The parable of the sower, or the parable of four different paths. And there is a path that is a hard heart, and there is a path and that is a rocky soil, and then thorny soil, and good soil. And then the path where a lot of people walked on symbolizes a hardened heart, heart that is not readily opening. And then there is a, a, a the soil that has a lot of rocks, it really uh, shares and shows the shallow heart. There may be an excitement, uh, but uh, the word does not really go deep because they have rocks that's keeping it from going down. And then thorny heart, although there seems to be a lot of good things happening, the thorn just uh, takes a, a sap out and life out of uh, what's happening in that person's life. And then there is a good soil where that is uh, the representing the heart that is ready heart, obedient heart, where the word is sown and then it produces 30, 60, 100 fold. As you and I are teaching God's word and then nurturing children, youth or adults, and then how we go about doing God's ministry with God's word, I think and there are a few things that will help us. Uh, remind us to keep things in perspective. Uh, one is this. 
there are at least four different kinds of people uh, with their heart. And then it's one out of four, and that's uh, what we see here as Jesus is talking about. As he's ministering Jesus himself to other people, only one-fourth are the people that are responding so readily. So we should not be so discouraged about people not responding. And that's what we need to see here. Uh, second thing that we need to think about is this. Now, the issue is not just them hearing, but issue is what's happening in their hearts. So we need to respond to their heart accordingly. For example, uh, the, the path uh, where the seed is sown, the word is snatched away. And it really pictures the bird taking God's word away, symbolizing the enemy, the Satan, coming, taking the word. But also the rocky soil where it's going down, but difficulties that's keeping it from going down deeper. It really reflect, <clears throat> talks about the flesh that makes it difficult for us to continue and grow deeper. And then thorny uh, really reflects the world and its uh, lure and temptation uh, that really takes our attention away from uh, loving God and then obeying God's word. You see, as we minister to God's people, people have different conditions and we need to pray to the Lord of the harvest. And then especially the Holy Spirit who is a farmer to work on the hearts of people as we minister to God's people. That the Holy Spirit will break down the hardened heart. The Holy Spirit will remove the rocks in our hearts. Holy Spirit will cut away and pull away the thorns that's making us so focused inwardly and do not have interest in the Lord. You see, we need to not only expect that, yes, not everybody will expect with ready heart, but also we need to remember that we need to ask the Holy Spirit to work together with us, touching and ministering to the hearts of people so that their hearts may be ready to receive God's word. But one more thing that's helpful is this. To those people where Holy Spirit works, breaking and removing and cutting away, purifying, the heart that is turned over, tilted, and that is ready when God's word is planted and it begins to grow. And when God's word is received wholeheartedly, it will bear 30, 60, 100 fold. You probably have few people in your ministry that represent people with good heart. Uh, although there are a lot of other people who could care less about the kingdom concerns. Few people that are receiving the word and because of the word that is planted, their lives are changed and their perspective and goal and vision changes and they begin to live in such a way that really becomes a blessing to you as you see that. That's the effect and that's the power of the gospel. Gospel does that to people who are ready to receive the word. I hope that you and I will not be so discouraged in sharing the word and gospel to other people. Uh, although there may be different responses, do not be discouraged, one out of four, because of the heart condition. And then as you minister, pray that the Holy Spirit will begin to continue to do a deep work, preparation work, but then sow the word. So that as the God's word are sown in the hearts of people, it will grow and it will produce its fruit. 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. And that's what God's word does. As you are ministering to people and teaching them God's word, do not become so discouraged 
when people are not changing. Remember, one out of four responded positively, willingly, readily to obey God's word. But they did. And remember, it's a condition of heart. Pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to work even in the hearts of those that are not responding quite yet. But to those that are saying yes to the Lord, so the, the word and so that not just one or two, they will receive the word and then God's word will continue to transform their lives and bearing much fruit. And may that also be the case for your life. May you bear much fruit of righteousness. May God's word transform our lives first before we expect it to change many others. Lord Jesus, help us not to be so discouraged because people are not changing. But Lord, as we come humbly before you, we pray that may your word have its work in us and transforming us. But through our ministry, may you continue to touch people, bearing fruit of righteousness 30, 60, 100-fold. In Jesus' name, amen.